Blaze, here he comes. What's going on, Porch Gang Cloud family, your neighborhood friendly fat man? What's cracking? It's Friday. Ugh. Billy, he keep his head in the clouds. Shout out calligraphy music, bro. Jag the Postal, Manny, Chris Means, Maul Beasy, everybody's big bro, Kadish, bro, that fucking group is phenomenal. This here is Calligraphy's THC featuring Billy Blaze of the Holistic Cloud. It is that beautiful tune being crooned about Bel Air Kush, which is going to be available in Ohio here very, very soon. You guys got to be on the lookout for the Hatter Stash and Paragon Development Group drops. Shout out Jason Wilson for just being an absolute, it's a veteran owned grow and a grow facility. They are a medical grow. Top of the line products, best prices anywhere, promise. Like they're going to run the price down. You'll see what I mean. When you guys see the, the, the American flag, weed leaf with dog tags, that's Paragon. Love you, Jason, dude. Can't wait to get down there and see the grow again. That place is... I just want to stand inside there and just... <sighs> you know what I mean? Just one good... <sighs> yeah. Who do we got in the chat? K. Klingman, what up? Zach Wright, in the building. My G. Brandon Cameron, in the building. My G. Diane Cameron, in the building. My G. <laughs> and we got camera guy, Cody. He's obviously just running the whole thing, so he's not in the chat. Um, and... First and foremost, we do have rights to this song and any calligraphy music, so suck it, guidelines. Amber Lunny, what's up? Jess Morris, how are you doing? Mama Wolf, what's up? Kelsey, hello. Michelle Holling said, I will be in Bel Air tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. all day long. Who else we got in there? Do we get everybody off the bat? Jag. Jag the Postal Rope. Speaking of, hang on. Show love, holistic cloud, politics throughout the nation. Making it stop the Billy Blunt's stash, play the taste of weed. Sorry. Oh, wait, yeah. Speaking of Jagda Postal, get your calligraphy music merch. Bro, hit up Jules, get on their website, like, cop your calligraphy. They got book bags, gym bags, they've got shirts, out the wazoo, hoodies, sweatpants, you name it, they've got it. Jag the Apostle, Manny Devise, Mr. Activated, Kadish himself, everybody's big bro, Maul Beasy. Definitely cop your Maul Black merch. My man's been putting out shirt after shirt after shirt after shirt. Chris Means, all of these guys have their own merch lines. Like I said, I happen to be rocking the Jag the Apostle. And I'll have the, like I said on the 420 Live, I'll have that one and only exclusive one on one Jag the Apostle shirt. So, I mean, what you know about it? Spend a lot of money with those guys. I love them. I support them. It is what it is. Harley Morris, what up? I feel like I just seen you. <laughs> Absolutely love you and Jesse. Thank you guys for coming and kicking it. We're gonna we're getting back to the educational stuff, guys. We're gonna have fun. I still have like four or five different challenges, you know what I mean, on the way. 
So be on the lookout for that. I need you guys to smash that like button. But I also want to start off with everything that we are going to talk about, discuss, is completely legal. It is finally legal in Ohio. Ohio is the 24th state to legalize in the state or in the country. That's something to fucking celebrate, and we have the ability to grow. It is finally legal. Single adult dwellings or six plants. But it said to do what I wanted was next. Why let it go? And then somehow the little baby shows up. The fuck? Lenny Skinny, what up? Everything that we are doing, I'm sorry, artists formerly known as Lenny. I got you. Everything we're about to do, talk about, is 100% legal. Single adult households are allowed six plants, three in flower, three in veg. Dual or multiple adult dwellings must be private dwellings, but if there's more than two adults in the household, you get 12 plants maximum. So that is six plants in flower, six plants in veg. So you can have six actively, you know I mean, budding plants. Other than that, if you have them all, when you're starting them all at the same time, they're all technically in veg. So as long as you veg the other one out longer, let your ones go into flowers, you want to start some, wait a couple weeks, start your next run, and then let them roll. Because by the time they're ready to flip, the other ones be ready to flip, you can have your, your cuttings already coming up, your seeds germinated, whatever, and get yourself a nice little perpetual grow. That is the mission. Get a grow started and keep that bitch cycling. That's if you're doing feminized plants. We will discuss regular feminized auto flowers because there's a difference in all three. Especially if you're buying online. No one explains this to you, but auto flowers run their entire life cycle all at once that you I mean you just make sure you feed them keep the lights on keep them healthy while they do their thing they will flip themselves they flip their, their flower cycle on their own usually it's an 80 day process sometimes they do take a little longer we covered that last week now feminized plants are what you're shooting for if you're looking for the bigger plants that you can actually clone aka cutting pieces off re-germinating said cutting so that it takes root and now you can grow another plant from that cutting. That's how you can keep genetics going without having to continually buy seeds, pop seeds, and worry about, you know what I mean, and will these seeds pop when you get them in? That's always a scary thing. So you wanna to go to reputable sources to get your seeds. But if you can get clones, that is, that's the goal, okay? That's the goal is the clones. Because, now granted, you don't have as many options as genetics, but that plant has already shown that it is ready to go. It's already got its roots. You know what I mean? Like it already has its little root structure started, so you just want to make sure that you can get it transplanted as smoothly as possible, which we'll go into. Because I had just a little, I had to deal with transplant shock, shock while getting this tent set up. I had taken some cuttings that were, they started in a hydroponic setup, and I put them into cocoa core. And it kind of gets a little bit even harder when you go into amended soil, which I'll explain that here in just a little bit. I've got some, I have a bag of Fox Farms soil that I want to show you guys. We'll read the back of it, explain exactly what makes those nutrients work as well as they do. But it also, we can explain why certain like babies and like seedlings, you don't want to have a super amended soil with a lot of like nutrients already added to it because those plants, when they're in their baby phase, are not very strong. Those roots are still brittle. They're growing. Which means if you have a lot of nutrients, you could, it, you could what they call, burn the plant. It's just too acidic for that seedling. So you want to start them in. Usually they have little seed starters you can go buy. The Dollar Tree sells them. So everything that I'm going to name off today, I'm going to give you the actual part you need and then the cheap way that you can kind of sub in for those of you that don't have the money to go out and just run out and buy an entire setup because it's expensive everything's expensive nowadays so naturally we balling on a budget so for those of you who are balling on a budget we're going to discuss mylar how you can use aluminum foil if you that's if that's what you have we're gonna we're gonna work with it people have been growing for fucking years without having you know what I mean tents and the best pots and all the nutrients there are organic alternatives that aren't super expensive that will be beneficial to your plant. Now, when you do cut corners and you have to, you're not always gonna get like the greatest yield. So, I mean, if you're planning on trying to get a pound of plant, that's gonna be tough to do unless you're really like dialing shit in. So, with that being said, who's excited to see the tent? I've been talking about this for fucking months now. And after months of piecing things together, ordering things on Amazon, waiting till payday to order the rest of it, and then piecing all that, and within the last couple weeks, 
we have finally got everything set up so that I can show you guys a legal in-home setup. I can't say this setup's inexpensive, but I will give you the inexpensive route you can take. Because I also have two separate grows going at the same time. Now granted, I did start them all at the same time, so they will finish at the same time, and then I'll cycle them out. But in order to show you guys the way I wanted to, it does have a dividing wall if I decide to add one. I went with the open floor plan. I've got cocoa core going on one side of the grow, and I also, which it will, that's coconut husk. It's a really, really good, I think it's a really good way to grow because it's light, it's airy, so you get plenty of aeration. You mix like your perlite, which I'll explain all of that, but you mix your perlite in there, and then you can add the nutrients the way you want to. It's almost a blank slate. I'll also be showing you guys, I mean, they, Cocoa Core comes in a bunch of different methods. It just depends on what works for you and what you have the money for. It can go from very inexpensive to 50, 60 a bag, depending on which way you go. But I've got Cocoa Core going on one side. I'll be explaining how to set up and how we will set up our next soil grow so that you guys can watch. And then we have the DWC, which is the deep water culture. Now that is when you get into the hydroponics, even though Cocoa Core is considered hydroponic because it's a blank slate that you have to amend yourself and that's whatever. Because they also, you use Cocoa Core in lieu of like rock wool when you're starting a hydroponic grow, which again, that's where you get in the net pots. They can tell you that's cheap because I mean, I guess you can do it in a cheap manner. If you use the five gallon bucket, take a solo cup, Cut your little slits so you can get your roots out and stuff, which I'll show you what I mean. But nonetheless, cut a hole in the top of a lid to that five-gallon bucket, sit it down inside there, get you a nice, a decent fish pump and some nutrients. You could get one started for fairly reasonably priced. But that also means if you can't afford mylar, you're going to need to take your aluminum foil, put it on the fucking walls of the closet, tack, 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 tack and then get you a couple really, really, really good floodlights from Lowe's and with the little silver domes, you can make it work. But let me jump into the chat back here. See, I think I, I, I see some more, got some more people coming in. The RG is the one I gave you. Yes, sir, Jason. Actually, I'm very, very glad you made it in here tonight. This tent here was made possible. I have another one that is my little personal project. But this bigger tent that I have here was actually gifted to me from Miss Dr Mr. Drone here, according to YouTube. <laughs> I'm not going to put his whole name out there. 100% Zach, one of the best in-home setups I've seen in a while. See, I love you. Jag, we coming over the next couple of days, work on some shit, my G. Yes, actually, I will be back in the studio this weekend with Jag the Apostle so we can finish. And Zach Wright. Because Zach decided he was going to show, hey, he's actually a really good fucking musician. Just disguised as a good guy. My man shows up, plays piano, fucking guitar, drums. I'm fairly certain he sings. Like, I kind of want to do him. Like, he put out one hell of a fucking, like, he put out a really nice instrumental. We put a little something, something on it. And now I think we're, I think we got a hit. I'm, I'm just saying. We need a little bit, we need him to tickle the ivories and my feelings just a little bit you I mean a little bit so this weekend i will be back in the studio we got to finish relate to my pain this song is gonna if y'all liked right my wrongs you're gonna love relate to my pain it's a lot more upbeat and then me and manny got a little something 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 coming here soon too that's a little more my speed and i i'd be lying if i said i'm not so fucking pumped for it mm. but you're gonna have to make sure you guys are tuning in make sure you guys are watching the snap but let me get a couple more of these comments before we get over here. Kay Klingman has open carry but still not legalized. Well, see, and that's Ohio is constitutional carry. Um, we had open carry for a while, but now it is constitutional as long as there's nothing in your background that prevents you from having a uh, pew pew. You can have one. And there's not much they're going to do. I mean, as long as it's legal, it ain't registered as stolen because there also is like really no registry in Ohio for pew pews anymore. It's... It makes things a little bit easier. I mean, it's, it's your it's your right to carry one anyhow. So you, they should it shouldn't really be a matter of like can you, and as long and I believe as long as you you weren't in for violent like offenses, you shouldn't have a problem being able to get your rights back once you're no longer a ward of the state. It is your second that is your constitutional right to bear arms. So as long as you didn't hurt nobody for how you caught your fucking 
your F on your report card, considering how easy it is to get an F on your report card nowadays. Now, luckily, I have stayed out of all that. Have I been in trouble? Yes. Do I have a record? Yes. But I've, I have stayed out of the felony realm. Not saying I haven't committed a bunch, but <laughs> whatever. I was an addict. <laughs> I'm trying to make up for it now, okay? But nonetheless... I believe that once you don't owe any, ta you don't owe any fines, no fees, and you have no more jail time, no, you know I mean, probation. It's been four years or so since you've gotten any trouble. You shouldn't have a problem getting all of your constitutional rights back because you've paid your debt to society. Now, if you were a violent douchebag, then yeah, no, clearly they're not going to just hand you something you can hurt somebody with again. Ty McDonald, what's up, Marcus Kidder? Glad you made it. Oh, he's super excited. Listen, I can't wait. Walmart's website actually has some pretty decent small grow tent or grow lights. Yes, now. Walmart has good ones. So does Royal King and Tractor Supply. Now, I have it on good authority because I go, I've actually like physically gone and checked. Royal King sells like all kinds of, because there are a lot of farming stuff and a lot of people do grow other things aside from just giggle bush at home. I know people that have whole grow tents that they have actual plants in. Whether it be their herb gardens, whether it be just regular ass, like, just house plants. But they have them. So, you can get really decent grow lights. At least if you're doing, like, if you're going to do one plant, two plants, they're perfect. Now, if you're trying to do something where, like, you're trying to do multiple, you're going to need to go and get you a good good light. Because that's where the, that's the money maker, is your lights. Yeah, you've got to keep your you have to keep your temps right. You got to keep your humidity and you know what I mean. But there's a fan can do wonders. So can like a little dehumidifier. Your light is what causes that plant to grow and what is actually controls the pace of how that plant grows and how it uptakes its nutrients. Your light is what tells your plant and signals for it to flip itself into the next stage of its life with how long you leave that light on. And if the more RGB, which is your red, green, blue factor which you're basically trying to recreate the outside. So your light is the sun. The fan you put in there would be the wind. These plants are used to growing where there's a small breeze, which is what actually causes them to grow their thicker stalks so they can support the weight of the plant. Now, if you have your lights up way high, it causes that plant to stretch itself out. You're not gonna have near as many good, like dense bud sites, but you're also stretching that bad boy so it needs to get wider to hold itself, because then you mean you're, you're you're stretching that plant out more than it wants to. So you want to grow your plants up, but you kind of I like I low stress train mine, so I let them which I'll show you guys all here in a second. You'll get visual aids. But I keep my lights low. I keep them on top of the plant. I bush mine out a little bit, and then if it's a it's a if it's feminized, I'll top or fem it, which again is called the fuck I missed. Linda Dobronetsky, I love you. Remember for eight months, promo level, I love you. Absolutely fucking love you guys. And honestly, people, that, that'll that kind of be another incentive because you'll get a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff with the Grow Deal. You'll get a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction when you need it. I'll actually be doing, and I'm, we're going to be opening up our reopening up our Patreon as well, so we'll be getting extra content and bonus content over on the Patreon to try to offset because YouTube stuff. It's hard out here for a pimp. Wind also stops mold and some insects. See, and I was just getting there. Thank you, sir. Your fan actually keeps your t it helps with the, the humidity. So that constant air moving and that air cycling, which is very important because your plants will mold. You're talking high heat where you're adding water. At times you're misting to keep the humidity there. Sometimes, depending on the area where you are, you have to actually add the humidity. So you would put a humidifier into your tent because you want to try to keep your humidity up a whole lot higher while it's in veg. So you want that constant air moving and that constant air cycling to keep your molds from building up, your mildews. If you've got a lot of stagnant water, it's super hot, that's beating down on that soil, it's a fucking breeding ground for mold and stuff that would bring in insects. You get fungus gnats. And that's a problem with a lot of the soils when you buy them from like Lowe's or like when you buy them from these big box stores is the way these soils are stored. Because these bugs come already in the amended soils or they work their way into like the little air holes while they're stocked outside at Lowe's. They're, those bugs are gonna look for cool, damp places that have things that they need that they can eat. And those little micro bacteria, the microorganisms are breeding grounds for other insects that you don't want around your plant. 
some pl some insects are just more of a pain to us than they are to your plant but a lot of them like aphids and root aphids will actually eat the roots of your plant and kill it so that's just a few things that you know I mean like air is a very big deal in this game you want good circulation but you don't want the you don't want it blowing directly on the plant you just want to create a nice breeze so you want an oscillating fan that'll go back and forth you just want to make sure that air is moving constantly and if you're looking at the hydroponic side of things, which you'll get to see here in a little bit, you want as much air as possible, especially in your water. Wherever your water tank is, the more water and the more oxygen, which means the more bubbles, the better. You wanna keep as much oxygen, as much nutrients, as much moisture and as much air moving in that side, that little unit as possible. So I actually, because I'm using totes, which you'll get to see here in just a second, I've got three air stones two really really big ones and one smaller one that just kind of floats back and forth to keep my water moving and cycling and i had my buddy jason here uh which is not jason wilson but another good friend of mine who he's been doing this a lot longer than i have as for as far as the hydroponics and he's i mean he's a fair bit older than i am so i'm sure he's grown a lot more than i have so i i mean i listen to him and he he produces very 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 good buds the water circulation you want to have a little submersible pump or something in there pushing that water around so while you're bubbling it is also circling and cycling as well just to keep things from getting stagnant that's what helps keep algae and moss from growing inside your tent or inside your container because that is something we'll get into here in a minute but that is the biggest thing you're fighting is tr you do not want algae and stuff built growing inside of your unit period well i guess you really wouldn't want the algae growing in your unit but you damn sure don't want it in your fucking reservoir for your plants so he thinks it's a crime still too Hagrid's wife hannah what up unfortunately you're still gonna have that no matter where you're at in the world there's there are still places that fully believe that cannabis is dangerous and that it's it, it's gonna bring all types of crime and it just couldn't be further from the truth. Play, a lot of the last places that have legalized, the only thing it's really done, yes, it raises your property taxes, whatever. That's raising regardless. No matter what, that's raising regardless. Cost everything is going to go up whether you legalize or not, so using that as an argument is a moot point. But it will rise property taxes, but it puts a fuckload of tax revenue back into the state way faster than anything else next to, like, the lottery. Hagrid, what up, Bubba? It's all right. You made it. That's what... I also populate my grow room with ladybugs. Now, see, I have heard people say that, that there are certain predatory bugs that people add to their grows because it does help keep a lot of the other, like, like I said, root aphids and stuff away. I've never done it personally, but I do have a lot of people coming in that I want to get their perspective so that you guys can also learn from other people. I've got some of the best growers that I know, and I'm pretty sure the best growers in the damn country, that I get to call my friend. So you will get to pick their brain as well. So if this is something that has interested you, I highly urge you, take a crack at it. It sounds like a lot of information. It sounds like it's super tough and super confusing, but once you get into it, and actually, it's like anything else. If you write down the directions on how to do something, everything looks terrifying on paper. There's a million steps to everything, but once you actually start doing this, honestly, it's been more therapeutic than anything, and it gives me something to nerd out on. There's not a lot of things in the world that interest me the way that growing this plant does, because it's ever-changing. These genetics, they're doing some of the coolest shit ever. If you drop the tent inside of your, if you're the temperature inside of your grow, down into the 60s, the low 60s, you can change the entire pigment of your bud. Especially if it's in the genetics for it, you can make that shit purple as hell. They have blooming agents that are made that you can add in little bits here and there around flower that not only dents in those buds up, but it also helps and aids in that color change. And a lot of the color shift in these strains nowadays is fucking gorgeous. Even if bud ain't for you, you can't look at the plant and say, well, that ain't a labor of love. You just can't. I can shut the entire world out. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what I've got coming up. For that few minutes that I'm in there, either trimming or, you know what I mean? Like, you're always picking at it. Like it is, You're not supposed to micromanage your grows at all, but I do. 
I'm constantly in there fiddling around. I just, I love everything about it. It once everything's going and it's going well, you don't have, there's not much you have to adjust. You know what I mean? You're just kind of like watching and waiting for the deficiencies and shit. You damn near get lonely. Like this shit, like, <laughs> I, there's not a minute that I don't want to be in there. And I want everybody to experience that. Not to mention, let's face facts, Gigglebush is expensive. Blake Elliott, what's up? I see you, Nate G. What up? But I have talked to a lot of people lately that have shown a lot of interest in growing. I've been doing soil grows for, I mean, most of, I mean, most, my teenage and adult life. But getting into the cocoa core and whatnot, I hadn't really, I hadn't really done much of it. I pretty much stuck to what I knew and I kept it there. I've had a lot of people try to explain it to me over time. You know what I mean? I've had a lot of people that are like, oh no, you, you know what I mean? This is better. I, I stuck with what I know. It saves you a ton. It gives you something to fucking do. But I've hit that point where I want to try new things with it because I understand at least enough with the soils. I tell everybody, I wouldn't jump right into it and try to do the hydroponics. I really wouldn't. Get to understand the plant. Get to know the plant. You have a... Now, the, people will argue this. I believe that if you're doing a soil grow, or like a cocoa court, like you have a little more breathing room. Like, say you start noticing a deficiency. You've got, a, you know what I mean, a day or two. You can correct that deficiency pretty well, even if it just means, you know what I mean, setting up a whole nother fucking thing and putting it, you know what I mean? It's, you can, you can amend that soil slowly and easily. Water's not as forgiving. It all needs to be there right now. When you start noticing the deficiencies, you need to get that adjusted quickly and promptly. So if you're going to do something like that and it's not in your house, like in Ohio, back to that legalization and the law part, you have to have your grow where it is locked up Children can't get to it. So mine is in a whole separate, you know what I mean, a separate building. Mine is not connected to my house in any way, size, shape, or form. I can also lock all three zippers to both sides. And that's important. That is part of the law. The whole thing about all of this is to do this shit legally, safely. We're not trying to give anybody any of that I told you so moments. They believe everyone's going to run out and start growing pounds. And is that a third? I genuinely hope they realize how hard it is to grow that much bud on one fucking plant. Let alone, you know what I mean, 12 plants in a household that only six are allowed to be in flower. Like, it is what it is. Again, criminal six. Empire. Six in flower, six in veg. Yeah, no, they believe you're going to start a, cr a criminal enterprise with six plants. Which is what it is. It's 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 gonna be. Uh, most people won't be able to grow that many plants at one time, right. and that's just on everything. Most people will not be able to grow that many plants. You won't have a tent big enough for that many plants at one time. Now, it's not saying people won't work up to it, but the average Joe does not know how to grow at that level. Not to mention the nutrients you would need, the setup you would need, the light you would need. <coughs> That light to grow that many plants all at once is going to be a couple hundred bucks. The average person growing is trying to get their stuff ready to put it out in their yard right now so they don't have to buy a light because people can't afford it. The electricity they got to pay to run those lights. Bingo. <laughs> Which, by the way, LEDs. I'm going to show you mine. <laughs> I'll show you mine. You show me yours once you get it set up. But... Go LEDs. The old days, you know, a lot of the old school guys will say high pressure sodium because that's what they're used to. And yeah, that it does yield great plants. It yields great results. And I'm not going to hate on that. But it's also going to jack your fucking electric bill up something awful. You think space heaters in the wintertime's bad? Wait till you run high pressure sodium for a full fucking cycle. <laughs> then tell me how you're feeling. That's when you take that's when you start taking your 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 Electric bill into the high triple digits. For sure. High. Like higher than me right now. No. LEDs all day. Just make sure the lights you're using are broad spectrum, full spectrum. And use the light that you need for your plant count. Don't try to cram four plants under a light this big 
and try to stay away from the old blurple lights the little bluish purple reddish purple lights they're not bad in you know what I mean they're not bad if you have it with another good light it does help because it adds that RGB factor but don't try to just do your stuff on those the, the, they've realized now that that they do more fucking harm than good now there's people that swear by them go ahead I get this one Exactly. I ran LEDs when I had my last setup. Yeah, LEDs way to go. Had some nice purple snow cone. Today was amazing. Yes! See, purple snow cone is that shit. I grow in a basement of a house and I still can't grow enough to start an enterprise. See what I mean? <coughs> Look how many fucking people have all the room in the world but then don't have the faculties to get together to put... Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I make decent money. And then with my extras that I get from social media that I have put directly into setting up and putting more into the show. You know what I mean? I, we don't, I, don't go, I don't get to keep the money that comes from YouTube. I don't get to keep the money that comes from Facebook. That doesn't go into bills. That gets put into this shit for you guys to give you guys a better experience. We're going to be upgr upgrading our mics here soon, which is why I need you guys' help. I don't need your money. I need you guys to push us into the algorithm. Share. Tag people. Smash that like button. That's what we need more than anything is to be pushed into the algorithm. We'll handle the rest. But I dumped, well, once you see the setup, with the exception of, and the best thing that I could have honestly probably hoped for was the fact that I was gifted the tent. Because the tent is the most expensive, second most expensive part of the whole thing. Kate motherfucking Savage. What up, girl? Glad to see you. What up, Matty Fockless? How you doing, hon? But yeah, your tent is going to be the second most expensive thing in your grow. Your light is probably going to be the most expensive. Unless Amazon does have some decent options, again, for small-scale growing. The, their bigger lights on Amazon are about the same price you're going to pay if you go to, you know what I mean, Mars Hydro or Spider Farmer, whatever, BBO Sun. All of them have really great options. Amazon will probably just get to you the fastest. Yup, it's the re up facts. And that's, you know what I mean? Like, I have put so much into getting this as clean and clear for you guys as possible so that I have as many guides as I need to show you guys every step of the way how we make this work, how all of this came together. And you can buy whole kits on Amazon, they do have sets that will come with a tent. They'll come with, like, AC Infinity has a really good one. That everyone's getting their, their income taxes. If it's something you want to do, take some of that tax money. Buy yourself a good tent kit because they'll come with the, the carbon inline filter, which I will show you here in a little here in a couple minutes. Um, it, it comes with the, uh, the tent itself. It'll come with, usually the ones on Amazon, come with a trellis net, which is your scrog net. That just kind of, it's a net that you put up that the plant grows up through, and it helps support and, like, kind of guide the plant. Um, but you know, some of them come with trellis netting. They'll come with the, the, the drop cables for your light. They're like ratchet cables, so it makes it a little easier to raise and lower your light since you will be doing that a lot throughout that plant's life depending on what you're growing. Can I pet that dog? Sorry. <clears throat> I can't read that and not like say it or hear that fucking me. I, I'm sorry. Take a deep one for me. I might be getting another kid in trouble. Okay. I got you, girl. That we are, Zach, and I need it after the day I've had the day. Hey, listen. This this show is where you can shut your entire brain off for a little while, laugh, learn something. Doesn't matter about the, the bills, the kids, the job. None of that matters for the next hour. It's just us, motherfuckers. We session. Everyone's always, I want to smoke with you. Y'all get to every Friday. But anyhow, the other tent kits that you can pick up, they will have like little clip fans with them. So just look at the one that works best for you. Some even do come with a light, but there you're going to look at, you're probably looking at about 500 bucks, 600 bucks, whatever. You also want, they make small tents that you can get for 40 bucks, 50 bucks. So if you're just trying to do one auto flower, you can get away with a tent, you know what I mean? Eh. 
something you can kick off in the corner. You know what I mean? Just make sure that it has the dual zippers, which most of them do, so you can zip it this way. But that way you can lock them if you have kids. Biggest part of that, either put it into a room that the kids have no access to or make sure you lock up the tent. That was the biggest argument that they had up on you know, Capitol Hill was, well, if we allow people to grow, the children would have access to it. Access to what? It's a plant. You have to physically heat it up. Nothing about that plant can do a goddamn thing to you while it's growing. Nothing. What are you going to do? Crumble up a leaf and do it? ain't going to do nothing for you. Like, it's like that, the gummy bears. Right, it's the whole gummy bear speech all over again. We don't even have gummy bears in this goddamn state for that reason. You got to protect the kids. And I get it. I get it. And then they're all, oh, well, pe the kids are still getting a hold of them. At, 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 that's because piss poor, like, business management is allowing people to allow younger kids to get a hold of, like, the Deltas. That's where the gummy bear things are coming from. And again, that's from people not doing their fucking due diligence and checking IDs. Because some people are just kind of eh about it. Just whatever. We're trying to kill the stigma here and show that people still can be responsible. And if not more responsible, then everybody that's out fucking drinking and fucking, you know what I mean? Like, it is what it is. That's an argument for another live. But nonetheless, I almost got on a little tangent there. But that was their biggest argument was that kids would get into the tents and you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry. It wouldn't matter if the kids got in that tent or not, but I mean, you still shouldn't let them. They don't want them exposed to it. Fine. That's absolutely, you know what I mean? Not unreasonable. So, just make sure it's locked up. Tent's locked itself. They can't get in there. But again, there's nothing in there that can really hurt them. Even the nutrients that you're using, they're all like food grade because you're going into a plant. Like, most of what you're using is food grade, biodegradable enough, even if they drank it, it would hurt them. Make, it might make them sick. My six-month-old grandbaby is in a state home. Oh, well, damn. I'm sorry to hear that. Ain't no different than a kid getting to the medicine or liquor cabinet. Exactly. We don't have to lock up. That's That was my biggest argument. I don't have to lock up my medicine cabinet. It's everywhere. You go to the grocery store, it's right there. Like, it does tell you, like, if you get a narcotics, you're supposed to keep them locked up, lock container, but no one does. <laughs> no, no one's, you know what I mean... No one's raising a big fuss about it. Liquor cabinets don't, you know what I mean? No, no one's, oh, you gotta keep your beer locked up. No, it's in the refrigerator next to the fucking milk. Kids just know not to touch it because you taught them that. I don't understand why that's so hard with weed. My beer's not hurting anybody. No, the choices and decisions you make while drinking are, though. Like, I'm... Uh, <laughs> the problem is you're talking with common sense and people don't like that anymore. But that is, like, the biggest argument, period. Like, why is it okay with alcohol? Like, it's totally... Are we, I can take a cooler to a kid's birthday party! No one bats an eye. That's the adult cooler. The kid's cooler's over... Y'all have all heard it. Y'all have all heard it. That's the adult cooler. The kid's one's over here. Well, somebody's watching it. Well, I'm not handing my fucking blunt to your kid, Connie. You know what I mean? Like... Mm. This is the adult circle. The adult section. Right. We smoke cigarettes as long as we walk far enough away from the kids. Nobody says nothing. Hey, he walked over there. The wind's going the other way. That's perfectly fine. But weeds, <laughs> weeds, weeds exposing the kids. Like, does anyone else, like, am I being punked? Michael Alaseo, what's up, Bubba? But without further ado, why don't we start showing you guys the setup? I, th I think it's time. We've talked about it long enough. <sighs> now again, it's still in its early phases, but... <sighs> there we go. Hey, don't tell me how to live my life. There, see? Ta da! Now, again, this 
big ass tent. Appreciate you, Jason. Michael Alisea, what's up, Bubba? Anybody else notice Cody zoomed in with Scratch? He always does. He be trying to give y'all OnlyFans stuff for free. I'm bisexual. You want to try something here? You got to buy me something. Ain't that what that means? Anyhow, some of the easier ways to get started are going to be, like I said, your soil and cocoa grows. Now, a lot of people use, which I'm not supposed to really show a lot of labels, I mean, whatever, but shout out. Well, I do like the Fox Farm. I like the Ocean Forest Blend, too. But it can be really, really, like, hot with the nutrients. So a lot of times you want to kind of mix this. Like, mix it down with good topsoil, whatever. You can go straight, but just know some of those come really amended. So depending on the nutrient itself and depending on the genetics that you're trying to grow with it, some strains don't like really harsh nutrients. Like, especially like if you have like super nitrogen rich soil, a lot of times that can cause you problems when they're in the seedling stage. So this one here is 100%, or I'm sorry, it's 100% cocoa core. I don't have any soil in there whatsoever. It's just soil, or cocoa core and perlite. Perlite is a, it's a crushed rock. It's like silica. But it's crushed up, it holds in moisture, and it actually helps aerate your soil, so it actually allows your soil to breathe. It creates little tiny pockets so it can store and still get its oxygen, and your, that's where a lot of your moisture pockets will be held too, so it kind of helps keep a path of least resistance for your water to go through your plant, but not fully escape it real fast. It's super inexpensive, and this is about the only Miracle Grow, Grow product I'll use is their Perlite, because you really can't fuck that up. <laughs> um, I don't pre-mix it, especially because it's going into Cocoa Core. Now, depending on your Cocoa Core, which we'll get into, if it's the cheap stuff, you're going to want to have to wash it. At least, you know what I mean? They come in bricks, which I'll show you here in a second comes in a really, really tight brick, so you gotta put it into a, like a tub, like a, well, one of these storage containers. You're gonna add water, and you're gonna hydrate the fuck out that mug. So, once you get your cocoa core fluffed up, you're gonna have to, you're gonna like wanna soak it in that tub, so you're gonna fill that tub all the way up with water, soak the hell out of it, have a separate tub that you can squeeze that, bring the water out of it, throw it into this other tub because it's going to have a lot of salt because of where coconut and coconut husk comes from. It's going to have a shitload of salt in it. Now, if it's more refined, it'll already be washed when you get it. And now these ones here are like the premier holy shit packages so far of Cocoa Core I've ever seen. These ones come ready to rock. You literally, they're made and it's to the exact measurement, if you had a five gallon fabric pot, which is what I suggest everyone uses, you sit that brick down in that fabric pot, add your water to it, and walk the fuck away. There is absolutely five gallons worth of corn, or uh, coconut husk already smashed down, and it already has the hole in the center for where like it'll expand up around, you can sit your plant down in it. Like, it's bougie. So, I mean, they, they really refined this shit down since way back when. But you can use things like rock wool. You can use... These little pebbles. They're clay pebbles. I like these because they make them out of, like, clay. Like, lava rock works really well, too. You just gotta rinse that kind of shit. You wanna rinse it off real good before you put it in your cups because there you don't know what's on it whatever but it holds a lot of moisture so it's something porous that, that water can escape through easy you know you can get air through it because it doesn't actually fill full volume and it holds moisture around that root barrier so say like your rock wool cubes for instance which one of these here in a second i'm actually going to show you what the roots look like before they get transplanted like we're going to go in depth because there are a million videos out on the internet all explaining how to grow different methods, but 
every one of them has so much information, and it it kind of becomes daunting. Like you're like, oh, okay, fuck this. So I did all that research for you because I've watched almost every video that has to deal do with dealing growing cannabis indoors. I've watched whether it's auto flower. Like I said, there's so many different ebb and flood, cracky method. We're gonna break all of that down in these next few lives. I have the video that I've got to piece together on my phone, um, but I'll be drop uploading that one here soon. And that was actually how this got put together, because this here was simply my cocoa core and perlite. You're gonna do about a 70-20, 70-30 mix of your cocoa core and your perlite. Just mix it up real good. Once you got it good and fluffy, just mix those two together. Because again, you're just creating that aeration. You're gonna put it down in your container. You're gonna hold yourself. A, you're gonna, I use the cup. This is a clone. But you can use the cup that it comes in. Cut that bad boy down. After you sit it in, make your little indent. Cut down the side. Just drop the little slug, which I'll show you in a minute, down into your cocoa co your cocoa core hole. Cover it up. Make sure it gets just a tiny bit of water. You can, a lot of people use like measuring syringes. Fill it up with water, hit that bad boy, leave it alone. You put a little humidity dome on it. It looks something like this. Which again, this humidity dome came from the Dollar Tree. Fabric pots, Amazon. I run 10 gallon because then for feminized plants, you can let them go a good ways. Like you can get a decent size root, a decent size plant out of a ten gallon container. Most people grow theirs in fives. But this humidity dome, give it a little mist, it has a little adjustable airflow. I always leave mine about halfway. That we still get a little air in there, but most of your humidity stays inside that dome. Because that helps keep that soil around that plant moist longer. So you're not having to continually water it so you don't waterlog the plant but it'll sit just over top of it it's a little too big right now but yeah it sits over top of it once you see that it's actually growing up and like when when your lights are on if it's perched up the way that one is where it lo almost looks like it's like trying to reach up towards your light that means that it is up taking its nutrients it's searching for light so it's alive when you notice they start to have a sag or a droop the droop is going to be one of like 80 billion things. That is like the part that freaks you out the most with growing is when that plant starts to do this shit. You'll freak the fuck out. Don't. Because if it's depending on if it's like these plants go to sleep. So if it's right before the lights go off, you'll notice your plant go from th from this like, yeah, to meow. they literally do go to sleep. And then about an hour or so before them lights kick on, you if, especially if you like put a camera in there, time lapse it and watch it, you will literally watch that plant. About an hour before the lights go off, after losing itself, drop down, drop down, boom. About an hour before that light comes on, you can watch those things, boom, boom. It's basically, those leaves are its solar panels. So it'll tilt itself up so it gets maximum reflection off that fucking light. And it'll pull all that shit down into the down into the stems and shit. So it's reaching up, trying to move those solar panels so it can grow more bud sites. When they're laying there like that, it's just kind of chilling. It's existing. It's eating. It's doing its thing. You're good. Once you notice it start to nosedive, and I mean really come down like, hey, then that's when you're looking into, okay, did I underwater it? Did I overwater it? Especially in like in that stage of the game, your plant is gonna do some weird shit. Don't freak out. But when you start to notice them in the limp position, you want to start taking notice as to what time it is. Did you just feed them? Did you change something about their feeding? These plants are spoiled. Okay, these genetics nowadays, you have to rub their shoulder, give them a reach around, and tell them they're pretty. Then they'll. They, okay, fine. Here's a leaf. But then one day, you'll come out, and there'll be like, you know what I mean, a whole bush there. And like, wow, when the fuck that happened? So it'll feel like, for the first couple of weeks, these things aren't doing shit. 
because that the root structure and it's what everything that's underneath the fucking soil is what's growing. You don't get to watch that part. So don't think your plant's dying. Don't because I did, dude. I've killed so many plants by trying to micromanage too early, not realizing. Okay, you're in you're in a car accident. You got shit fucking removed. You know what I mean? Like you were ejected from the car. It's gonna take you a couple weeks to get your shit before you can fucking start like doing the things you were able to do before. Same fucking thing with a clone. You're taking it out of its plant. You know what I mean? It's been in that pot since it come up. You know what I mean? Since the way back. So the only thing it knows is that pot, where it's at, whatever. You fully disrupt that when you take that fucking thing out, even though you're putting it in the dirt. You're putting it where its food is. It still has to take a minute to acclimate those fucking roots to now the nutrients, the temperature of that fucking soil, how much moisture's in it, so it needs to know like, how much root it needs to grow to get to that water source. Like, the, these things are, like, I've killed way too many micromanaging these bitches just because, you know what I mean, you, you, you kind of read too much into it. Who is calling me knowing good and well? I don't know if he knows I'm live. Hang on. <laughs> You're on the live with Matt. What up? What's up, my guy? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, Bubba. What are you up to? Yes, sir. Enjoying it. Yes. Actually, I will be up there all fucking day long from like noon to six. So you get a chance, stop in and see me. I'll see you then, Bob. Dude, calligraphy is fire. Absolute gas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They local as fuck, so we can we we can make some shit happen. But I'll give you a buzz here a little bit later. Uh, all right, boss. Have a good night. I love that dude. Shout out Scott E. Mac, the lot of court. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of great artists, man. Like that's why I said, like for him, I'm answering that phone. They got a lot of great artists. Mm. But anyhow, shout out the lot of court. Love you guys. Um. But anyhow, where the hell was I? Talk about how you killed so many plants and you make them in. I don't know, you're not watching the live. <laughs> well, I'm glad you just now remembered that. We will talk wrestling as soon as I'm off the live. Love you. <laughs> she said, Rhea Ripley fact. <laughs> All right. Yes, she does. I can't blame her. I love Rhea Ripley. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyhow. If you're going to do any type of growing, I would start soil. Period. It's the easiest way to start. Cocoa core, if you understand the nutrients like if you aren't afraid to get in there and look up like we like your mpk where it'll kind of break down what nutrients you need and you can get the uh flora micro the grow micro and bloom set from general hydroponics this is what i use um and they have bud builders and other things like that which i'll cover in the next live and the next video we put up but these are the nutrients that i use especially when it comes time because most time if you're using soil You'll have enough in there to get you started. Like you'll have enough in there to get, mo I mean, at least through the very beginning of your veg before you have to start messing with nutrients. And it, it's a lot to take in at first. Once you kind of get the, the idea of what's going on, it's super easy to break down. And I'm going to break all that down and so much more in the next video. But as you all can tell, I have hit the hour mark and everybody needs my attention. So, I love you guys. I will see you guys right back here Friday. We're gonna tear into this whole uh, DWC setup over here. That's a whole video in itself. 
So I hope you guys had a good night tonight. I hope you guys at least learned a little something something. If you enjoyed this and you want more of it, make sure you guys come back Friday, tag a few people, share us if you get a chance to. Don't forget to be a decent human being. Love, peace, chicken grease, hit the rock, don't smoke it, drive safe, wear condoms. Billy Blaze has the, uh, the pre-sale tickets for the Billy Blaze birthday bash are out now. Get that NFT. It's only going to save you money in the long run. The more NFTs you have, more events, the more money you save, and the more cool shit you get to do down the line. So, I'll see you guys Friday. Uh, hopefully, I see you guys before then on the posts. And I hope you guys, if you guys have any questions, any comments, anything you want to hear, any topics you want discussed, drop it into the comments. Send me a message directly. I'll see you guys next time. Love y'all.